Well, what an incredible atmosphere. And it seems like we say the same thing over and over each time we come in here, but our fans are by far the best in the country. And this is why you come to UGA. <coughs> when you get an opportunity to play in an atmosphere like that, in an environment like that, it was really incredible. Um, you don't really know what's inside you in life or football until you get tested. And uh, I thought we got tested tonight. We found out a lot about our team. Uh, we're far from perfect, and we got to get a lot better. But they'll fight you, man. They'll fight you over and over again. And there were some really large hearts out there um, tonight. One, DeAndre Swift, who ran the ball with passion, guts, and just relentless effort. Um, the effort and leadership of a Jake Fromm to third down scramble and take two hits and almost get a first and manage the game really beautifully. Um, and then the defense to rise up, keep playing past a bunch of injuries, a couple injuries on the offensive line, and I'm just proud of our guys, man. So much emotion in that locker room, so much effort, and really hate for Notre Dame, who has an unbelievable team and played a great game to have to lose that game. Curry, you're making adjustments at halftime with offense. Uh, Jake said you start picking up the blitz a little better. And uh, what would you say about the second half of the game? I don't know that it was picking up the blitz. It was <coughs> making sure we had some space to run the ball. They were extremely aggressive uh, playing the run, and I think they felt like they had to. That was their that was their shot to contain the run, stall the run, and they were playing downhill fast, extra guy in the box, and we really weren't able to make them put, make make them pay for that early. Where in the second half. Loosened, loosened them up a little bit, um, opened things up a little bit more, went a little more tempo when we had a chance, and basically worn down. I mean, we were able to run the ball better because we had been running the ball. And uh, you know, I thought our, our conditioning played a major favor in that game as the game went on. Coach, what was going on with their tight end number 84? He was having a lot of success there at the beginning. A hell of a player. There was nothing going on with him. He's, he's a great player. And, when you're running boots, nakeds, waggles, all kinds of things, that, that guy's a phenomenal player. There's nothing going on with him. He's just a good football player, and uh, they were targeting him a lot. If you notice later in the game, they tried to target him, and we had two or three pass breakups. Kirby, Jake made a number of plays on third down tonight. You just talked about his response in those situations, and then also the, particularly the touchdown pass uh, where he ran Coach Zero. Yeah, he played, uh, he played really well. I mean, I. I thought that he managed the game, and there were some times the shot clock was down on him, the play clock. And we always talk about with this with this kid, you got to give him a chance to work. You got to let him make decisions. And we didn't do that real well tonight. We didn't allow him the time to do what he does best. And we got to do a better job managing that as coaches. But I mean, Jake Jake takes things and things that are broke and fixes them. He makes wrong right, and uh, I'm glad he's on our team because he's a leader. He's a commander in chief. I mean, guy makes good decisions. Losing Stokes on the second play, can you talk about your secondary, your corners being tested like that? Hang on, the second, the second question was about Cager on the third down. Yeah, the touchdown. Throw. Yeah, I mean, he didn't check anything. I mean, he, he, he knew where to go with the ball versus that look. And um, he, he, I mean, if you max blitz him, I'm not going to say he's going to make you pay because you still got to win one-on-one. -on -one. But he knows where to go with the ball. And uh, he sees all those same pressures and coverages every day in practice from us. So he's not easily fooled by that. Then the cornerbacks put Stokes going down that early, being tested in the secondary depth. Yeah, that was tough. I mean, if you told me one spot we could afford to lose somebody, at that point, it was that one. And, you know, I don't know. He came back in the game and, and played later, but I, I just don't know if he was 100% or not. It was a tough call whether to put him back in there. He wanted to go back in, but and he did go back in, give him a blow, but I thought we were playing pretty good defensively and we had rhythm. So we, you know, had Tyreek in there and, uh, DJ. What has uh, Bob Wilson done to put him in the position that he was in this evening to have the game he had? He works hard. Devon's uh, a talented player that loves football. Uh, he works every day. He understands coverages and leverages real well. And made a big play, uh, big play tonight. After Andrews to the O-line, how big of a boost was it that Isaiah Wilson came on and did what he did? It was big for us. I mean, I, you know, we felt like he was we, we couldn't tell, you know, we practiced a little bit. He didn't get to do a lot during the week. And then pre-game warm-ups, he looked pretty good, but he had not gone against, you know, fast people. And we were a little worried about putting him in there, but then we felt like we needed to at the half. And, uh, you know, Sam made a good call to put him in there. And 
I can't tell you how he played or how the other guys played. I have to watch the tape. Is there anything else you could say about Rodrigo blanking chips? Those kicks ended up being just huge. Just clutch. I mean, Mr. Consistency and uh, it's a pleasure to have it. I mean, it's like Jake. You know, you go, you go through your, your life coaching and you may only have one or two Rodrigos and he's he's clutch. And, uh, he loves it. He wants he wants to be in the line. He wants to have pressure on him. Um, Coach, so when you Look at last drive offensively for the Notre Dame. Um, so, what can you say about how your team kind of handled the in stretch there? And, and did you see some similarities from 2017 in terms of how, how you know, like you guys had to stop in, in order to secure the win? Yeah, there's some similarities there. I didn't think about it that way. I just, you know, kept telling Dan stay aggressive, and he did. He, you know, it's get. You know, you, you got you to make a decision at that point. Am I going to give up one, or am I am I going to come after him? And uh, we were able to get a couple of incompletions, and pressures, and then we got him to fourth down where we had an opportunity to win the game. And um, you know, I thought I mean, Nolan and Jermaine looked like they broke through there on that play. And our depth helps us. We have we play a lot of players on defense. And when you're fresh in the fourth quarter, it looked like that we were fresher than they were in the fourth quarter, and was able to disrupt them offensively at the end. Oh, unbelievably important. I mean, you think about that game, you think about the, the bot snap on one drive. I mean, they impacted the game tonight more than I've ever seen a game impacted, not only here, but anywhere, where they just affected the, the game with the false starts and the different things. And it, it burnt their timeouts. You know, it's a different game if they're calling timeout at the end of the game to get the right play, right personnel, you know, maybe get guys fresh. Now they don't have them. The clock's running because they burned them earlier because of the crowd noise caused them to. So uh, it was definitely the 12th man today, and we certainly needed it. Kirby, how huge is it for you guys to be tested like this? What does that mean for you going forward with the rest of these eight games? Well, like I said, I think I think when you get tested, you find out something about your, yourself inside. You look inside yourself when you get tested, and there's some guys that had to look inside themselves. So they had not been tested like that. And how are they going to respond? And they came out fighting. You know, we showed the guys the, the Matt Hughes, Frank Trigg UFC fight, and in the end of the fight, he says, you know, you're never out of the fight. You're never out of the fight. He came back from having been down and almost in a submission position, and he, he just said, you're never out of the fight. And that's what we talked about all week. We were never out of the fight. And then at halftime, we knew we weren't out of the fight. The whole game, we were, our kids kept saying, you're never out of the fight. You had some players after this game talking about how you left some stuff out there. Maybe it wasn't the cleanest game for them, but at the same time, they said they're built for this built for this type of game, the four quarter thing. What, what do they mean by that? Well, I think that that's what we want to be. We want to be a dominant team in the fourth quarter. We want to try to break people's will. We want to be able to take over the line of scrimmage, which at the end of the day, when you look at the rushing yards, we won the line of scrimmage. I mean, it was, they, they didn't run the ball real well on us in uh, 152 to 46. So that, that's what this team's built on. You know, we've got to be able to do other things. And it keeps coming back to that. But I think we're built to do that. Solomon was uh, injured, I guess. He was crushed it there. Uh, yeah, I don't uh, know. Well, okay, and, and well, Schaefer filled in for him. You know, yeah. How Schaefer came in and did a nice job. You remember Schaefer got player of the week a couple weeks ago, and you know we wanted to play him some more last week. And you know we're very fortunate that when Sally went down, there's a guy that can step in there and go play. And I don't know how he played. He had a personal foul penalty that wasn't very smart to hurt us, but uh, he, he plays hard. He plays very similar to Sally. Passion, energy, and toughness. And I thought he stepped right up. As several guys did. You expect so Campbell back the after the bye week? You expect Tyson so Campbell back after the bye week? What about the bye week? Tyson, Tyson Campbell week. Oh, I have no idea, man. I mean, I, Tyson Campbell day to day. I got. I can't tell you if he's coming back or not. The, the, the trust team? that Jake has earned with you and the coaches is it, is it the same for J.R. Reed and his presence out there and his knowledge. Absolutely. I mean, he was the human eraser. He he had two or three plays that were going to be explosive plays. He gets a guy on the ground because it's about to break out. We busted a coverage and then. You know, he makes the pick that, that, that really changed the whole environment in the game, and he just he makes big plays. You talked about Ian Book all week and did use a lot of Houdini, uh, a lot of different things. What what, what did you think uh, seeing him in action today? He's very athletic, very intelligent, hard to finish on, uh, makes really good decisions with the ball. I mean, he's, he causes problems because he can scramble and run, and, you know, you, especially as you get tired and your rushers aren't fresh, I mean, he can take off and get 20 yards a clip.
When Kager goes in the transfer portal, do you remember the conversations you had with Coley about him since he knew when you recruited him in terms of what he could bring to the program? Yeah, I, I, I recruited uh, Kager to Alabama and he came on several visits and had a good relationship with him. Coley ended up getting him partly, knew him well, and I mean, it was a no brainer for us. I mean, paint the picture. You can go play with a quarterback that's played and place this deficit of receivers. I mean, it, was a, it was a great match. Even with Rodriguez's consistency, did you at all consider going for him? Yeah, uh, I wanted to, and uh, I didn't. Uh, I, I didn't realize how far it was. I thought it, uh, when they when they, re they went back and reviewed it, I thought it was going to be inches. And then once we looked out there and said, I think it's almost a full yard. We just went with the points and said, Hey, we're playing good defense. We felt like they had to score two touchdowns to beat us, and that ended up being the you know the difference in the game. But you know, that's one of those. All you guys could second guess me if, if they scored a touchdown, why didn't you go for it? So that's the life we lead, and uh, it's a tough call because you got to feel comfortable you can get a yard when you have to. It seemed like in the first half when, when you guys got third down, dialed up some pressure, they had the perfect call on and, and picked up some of those. How, how frustrating is that as a coach, and, and how did you guys adjust to it? What were they on third down? I think they were like 30% on third down. So our goal is to be 70% off the field. I, I, I came off the field feeling like we played pretty good on third down. Um, they hit us on one uh, coverage. We had a bust between miscommunication between two guys. But outside of that, I don't know that the other ones were short yardage conversions, which they got high probability of. But I thought we played good on third down. What did you make the way how sort of physical the Andre sort of seems to run tonight? You know, he didn't have a lot of long breakout runs, but he sort of seems to be turning. Yeah. He's a physical dude. I mean, he, he played with passion, heart and courage of a champion, and he took some ownership in the team, and he had just as much impact on that sideline talking to people as he did on that field carrying that ball, and that's what it's all about. You pleased with D-Rob Kirby when he came back and made some big catches tonight? Yeah, I thought D-Rob had the one over the middle, the little bender, you know, he and the guy were kind of 50-50, and he won that battle for the ball, and that was big for him. Is the open date at a good time? You knew you were getting two of them this year. Yeah, I mean, I, I always think it, oh, it comes at the right time. Uh, it, it's best that it comes after a win because it was a long open day last year. Uh, so it's, it, it makes that part much better. But look, whether we won or lost this game, we still had big games to play and we still control our own destiny. I still think that doesn't change. We just got a lot of glaring things we got to work on to get better. But I got a lot of respect for their football team and their football player. Does Jake tomorrow is I don't know. I mean, uh, kid didn't, didn't hit a great punt, but we picked him up. We got his back, and uh, he's, a, he's he's an unbelievable punter. He just didn't hit great punts tonight, and he'll go back to the drawing board, and we'll keep getting him better. You talked about turnover margin earlier this week. Yeah. What did those two turnovers in the second half, particularly the odds, take on that first drive? How did you get things going? Huge, huge. I still don't know that we had it covered. I mean, it was you'll have to be the judge and look at it. It was more he handed it to us than, than, than we just took it because it, it hit him. He had the first and it ricocheted off. So some of that's luck. Uh, but he, two turnovers to, I guess, R1, is that correct? So if you beat them in the penalty war and the turnover margin, I think we had studied they had had like 27 straight games where they had not lost the turnover battle or they had not lost a game that they didn't lose the turnover battle. I think the last time they tied us in the turnover margin, the last time they played lost. So it was, it was just emphasized over and over this week about beating them in the turnover margin. And we couldn't get a fumble off of them, and we tried, but uh, we did get two picks. Sanford Stadium now has special effects like never before. What did you kind of think of that? And how much were you kind of paying attention to all that? I know you got a game to I have no so. idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried the power went out a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't blink. As long as my headphones work, that was good. <laughs> Two more questions. Any special reason why you didn't go to Pickens uh, more in the first half? He had single coverage. To look, it looked like. Yeah, it, it might look like it, but it wasn't always single coverage. And uh, there were some things they were doing, creating some problems for us. They did a good job making things up up front. And, to be honest with you, George is continuing to improve, and uh, we want to go to George. Every opportunity we get, George has to be the complete player. He blocked really well tonight. He did some good things tonight. We tried to go to him in the end, but uh, in the beginning, they, they, they didn't present us an opportunity to do that a lot, and it's not one-on-one -on -one like you think when it's quarters. Last question, anybody? Kirby, I don't know how many snaps uh, Tyreek McGee got in the first few games, but uh, you know, to keep them invested and, and you need them to 
on that come through? Is that kind of what you expected for a senior again? Yeah, Tyree McGee is, you know, he's from Peach County, but they make you hard and soiled, and you hit every day of practice. One of the toughest, most physical schools in the, in the country, our state. Kiaris is from there. The kids you get from there are just tough as nails, and this kid has been through so much. He started last year. He wasn't started. He's had injuries, and he, he's, he's very uh, bought into the team. He'll do whatever you ask, and this week we told him we were down corners. If somebody gets hurt, you may have to play. Instead of repping at star and safety, we're going to put you at corner, and, you know, he took reps at corner, and, um, he went in the game and played. He played. He's played other games at corner. He hasn't always played exactly perfect, but he's a winner. He's a fighter, and he's a senior. And that's why you have depth in your program. Because if you don't have that depth, then you may have a bigger drop off at that position. And it could be the difference in the game. Look, guys, thanks a lot for the coverage. This was an awesome game atmosphere. Go dogs.